this morning parler de la jeunesse we spoke about youth et nous avons donc vu que il y a des il y a des il y a des sujets transversaux and we saw of course that there were cross cutting topics et euh, fini and we la saw jeunesse, that in the end youth in Africa can be an asset or can be a challenge. And this conclusion was stated by uh, the representative of youth at the African Union. It can be an asset or a challenge. This will depend on the leadership. So we need visionary leadership so that these youth do not pose a challenge, but rather become an asset, because we know in the years to come, this is something that is going to be a state of great size. Okay, so we're going to continue along the same path, not to talk about the youth, but to talk about women, peace, and security. But what is interesting is that the youth, as I said, there are cross-cutting topics, which means we can't talk about youth without talking about gender. We can't talk about uh, youth without talking about employment, and you cannot talk also about women without speaking about employment. So these two topics are intrinsically linked. Aujourd'hui, aujourd'hui, so, plus que jamais, today, le genre than ever, ne, ne peut pas être occulté dans, dans une prison. People cannot be hidden away into a prison of, of decision-making in a conflict. In this management of peace, uh, increasingly, this idea is more and more relevant. Uh, and you can see this in conflict, in conflict. Plus en plus, in areas. You see the role of women, garçons, of girls, of qui, young men, effectivement, donc, and men. Important. They all play an important les groupes, role in these areas. Non, non in non-state armed le, actors, uh, filles, you'll see in the conflict zones that there will be women and young women who are not only victims, but also actors within this conflict. So the issue of gender is an conflict, unavoidable issue when you talk about conflict, when you talk about peace and security. Souvent, and they logistique. are often used for logistics. Uh, they often les handle uh, pour, uh, logistics uh, uh, to cook, to collect uh, intelligence, to quoi, act as liaisons, and even worse, they are used for other things as fighters. Vous souvenez donc les, 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 les suicide bombers, hein, you know, the, the suicide bombers in Nigeria, if you'll recall, they, so they are also sexually exploited. Donc ça fait so there autant is sexual qui violence that is involved. So all these items mean that women and girls mais suffer mais much more than men and boys. En uh, and so when we talk about gender, we must take all of this into en account. Des zones de conflit, so outside conflict areas, donc, des zones, when we dire, talk about uh, countries within a country, there is under representation of women. Women in general are, are not. The issue of gender is not sufficiently taken into account in representation within uh, the security sector. There is work that is being done, but there's still a lot to be done. In some countries, this issue has been well handled, taken into account. For example, in Rwanda, I think there's around 60, 65 percent female representation in the National Assembly. In Niger, 25 percent of of, of the government and the assemblies, uh, they represent 25% of those bodies. Okay, 49. 49 uh, female deputies of parliamentarians. So prior to that, it was only 29. So Merci. Donc, avec une prise en compte donc de la jeunesse. So, donc, c'est vraiment un pas en avant. The, the je pense que nous devons donc encourager cela. So, Et je crois que c'est cela qui amène it. donc la résolution so, 1325 du Conseil de la Sécurité qui nous fait encourager cela. Qui fait en sorte que le genre soit pris, soit pris en compte. This, to, to take into account gender and aims to increase inclusion in decision-making functions. By bringing about gender 
equality and uh, making it a fundamental donc, principle of the donc, reform of the security sector. Sécurité, this brings us back to cela, donc, the security sector. And accordingly, this session le sujet, donc, aims to narrow the subject down to the security sector. Nous by uh, addressing the following objectives, we're going through this session, uh, we're going to look at the impact of gender on security in Africa by emphasizing the fact that this involves both men and women. I think we said this earlier. You know, sometimes we think that gender only involves women, and then we want to analyze the role of gender in non-state groups in Africa. Then we want to do a critical assessment of the recent uh, efforts to improve gender inequality in the sector, sec security sector in Africa, and then examine the role that security sector leaders must play in improvement um, in, in integrating this gender aspect in the security sector. So these are our objectives, and that's what we'll try to achieve. To do so, uh, we invited two brilliant experts on this issue and who are here with us today. They are moderators, facilitators, and they are also experts on this topic that we are going to examine today. No, so their biographies are included in your materials, but I do want to touch upon a few points of their very extensive experience. I will begin with Dr. Martha Moutissi. Elle que vous voyez à, la, à ma droite, à ma gauche là-bas, et que vous connaissez très bien, elle est dans, dans quel groupe de discussion uh, You know her group over one. there, she's voilà, in donc, group one, tous les the discussion group elle est, one. Elle est vibrante et vraiment, elle partage très bien uh, son she's expérience. Vibrating. Donc je commence par, donc, uh, par she, Martha. She's vibrant. Martha, she's... Donc, euh, She's very interesting, and she comes from Zimbabwe. That's her country of origin. She uh, is an academic, and she is a practitioner. She has 15 years of experience in the realm of peace and security, the resolution of conflicts, governance, and development. This is uh, her portfolio. And so she has been working on this for over 15 years. So she is actually a, a, she has a huge amount of experience. <clears throat> and we're going to use it. There's, she can answer to all your questions. She has worked with uh, you know, with her expertise has brought her to the UN. Uh, UN uh, she has been a specialist within UN, uh, the, the program on gender, peace, and security at the UN. So she has also worked with ACO, which is the African Center. For, for, constructive resolution for a constructive of resolution of disputes. Elle a travaillé donc à ACO. Um, Elle a travaillé comme consultante et conseillère à l'Union européenne. A consultant and an advisor at the European Union, Union the UN, UN as I noted, the African Union. Et la SADEC. And she worked for SADEC as well. IGAD. IGAD. Et le COMESA as well as COMESA, de 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 uh, the East African Community, the CEA, and uh, the standby uh, African Force. Dans, dans so she has been to all the big une, institutions une in de, uh, East Africa. De so she has an extensive de experience de in East Alors, Africa donc, as well as in Central Africa. So she has a doctorate in analysis and resolution of conflicts from George Mason University in the US. And she has a master's in peace and governance from the University of Africa, and a master's in sociology and anthropology from the University of Zimbabwe. Martha, je vous demande donc de so Martha, de, de faire un bain pour tout, uh, please say hello. Alors, la deuxième présentatrice. So the second presenter. J'appelle la. Madame Uri Traoré, uh, Uri Traoré. Qui, qui est une dinosaure du César, une dinosaure du César. Of ACSS, <laughs> elle est là depuis donc 2010. <laughs> She's with us since 2010. Elle a le dans ses And she has supported ACSS's activities, activities over 40 
activities. So she is full of experience. Elle est originaire du Mali. She is originally from Mali. Mais elle est surtout consultante en international. But she is primarily an international senior consultant. Elle a travaillé essentiellement pour. And she has mainly worked. CMI, 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 Crisis Management, Crisis Management Initiative. Et elle a travaillé pour Marty Atisari Peace Foundation. And she worked for the Marty Atisari Peace Foundation. Et ses principaux domaines de compétences sont les suivants. Elle a aussi dû faire des métiers de la presse. Elle a aussi dû faire des métiers de la presse. Elle a aussi dû faire des métiers de la presse. Elle a aussi dû faire des métiers de la presse. Elle a aussi dû faire des métiers de la presse. Elle a aussi dû faire des métiers de la presse. Elle a aussi dû faire des métiers de la presse. Elle a aussi dû faire des métiers de la presse. Dotée d'une expérience so exceptionnelle, elle a fait du dialogue et de la médiation du genre, dialogue, intégration du genre, uh, mediation, integration of gender and youth. De so she has a strategic advice on SSR. Uh, she has worked on human process. rights. Elle a, elle avec donc OneUp, promotion des conflits, conflict de la paix, prevention, transition post-conflict, uh, post-conflict transition. Il y en a trop. There's en outre, donc, Madame Traoré a travaillé really, avec l'Union um, africaine, say, comme uh, African uh, Union, Martha, just like Martha. Elle a travaillé avec la Comité économique de l'Afrique uh, uh, de l'Ouest, la CEDAO. Uh, elle a travaillé avec l'Union européenne, elle a travaillé avec les Nations unies, elle a travaillé avec les institutions de formation et de coopération des institutions de la paix et des respects, elle a travaillé encore avec ACCORD, comme Martha, comme si elle se connaisse depuis longtemps. Like Martha, so she, they know each other. I mean, they're almost twins. They work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. Now, we're going to see how they work together. So these two accomplices are here. The Heller School of Social Policy at Brandeis University. Et aux États-Unis, et d'une deuxième maîtrise en droit humain. And she has a second master's in human rights and democratization from the European Interuniversity based in Venice, Italy. So I didn't lie to you. You are going to get what you need to hear. So I will start by asking Martha. Donnez d'abord une round of applause pour. Madame Traoré. And first, could we have a round of applause, applause for Ms. Traoré? C'est tellement subi de donner de encore un round of applause pour les deux femmes. Uh, so you know, a round of applause for the two women, please. Ok, merci. Donc, euh, alors, euh, je vais demander à Martha. Donc, I'm going to ask Martha dire, donc, ce, to cette, euh, cette séance. Open the session. Donc, euh, nous en répondant aux questions suivantes, nous allons By answering the following nous questions. Nous so we're going to actually donc, achieve all our objectives. Dr. Martha, so Dr. Martha, nous allons vous demander donc de, avec des exemples. Please des exemples tell us uh, examples, specific examples to illustrate the positive impacts of the inclusion of women in peace and security processes. And give us also the negative impacts, because I know that you have this expertise to share. Uh, we also need you to take into account this issue of gender. And as it is often neglected in security matters. So the role that young women and women and men and young men play in conflicts in Africa. And can you do this from a lens, uh, you know, applying a gender lens to this? Uh, you know, and the political, um, what leaders in the security sector should do about this. And then if you could talk to us about the obstacles uh, that face donc les décideurs aussi bien pour que l'inclusion des femmes et du en termes de inclusion des femmes et la sécurité en providing security and what are the next steps to overcome the obstacles in this area Dr Martha Dr Martha you have the floor thank you Dr Emu uh, and thank you for the warm uh, introduction and good afternoon uh, colleagues so I think, I think uh, uh, in his uh, uh, setting the context, uh, Dr. Emil has uh, done a great job uh, of situating 
uh, uh, the imperative for the women, peace, and security agenda in uh, overall security processes. But I just want to reiterate that I think from day one, we, we, we all heard that the nature of conflict is changing uh, in Africa, particularly as we are witnessing uh, an, an increasing number of uh, intrastate conflicts, which are often asymmetric in nature. And that type of conflict is having a disproportionate impact on women and girls, uh, as well as on young people. Uh, as Dr. Emil has already mentioned, very often uh, with such types of conflict, women and girls are often singled out as targets uh, by terrorists or extremist groups and armed groups who ab abduct them and use them as uh, suicide bombers, uh, sex slaves, or human shields. Um, the, the proliferation of arms uh, and weapons has also further amplified the vulnerability of women to violence, uh, conflict-related sexual violence, rape, displacement, among others. And then when we come back to uh, other contexts where we have uh, uh, local conflicts or community-based conflicts, the impact is still the same on women and girls. So I think that situation uh, in itself really reminds us that when we are talking about peace and security processes, we need to be inclusive because uh, by so doing, uh, when we are inclusive and intentionally gendered in our approach, we are likely to create a more durable and more sustainable peace. So looking at uh, that context, I will uh, present some examples where women have been meaningfully engaged and uh, successfully included in peace and security processes uh, and, and how that, that has impacted on the resulted uh, peace and security agenda. So I'll start with uh, looking at the case study of Somalia. I think, I think it was one of the earliest uh, um, um, uh, case study or examples where women, uh, through their uh, sheer determination, demonstrated that a peace that, that, does, that does not include them is likely to be an, an equal peace, an exclusionary peace, and a fragile peace. So this groundbreaking example of how inclusion of women can make a difference uh, in peace and security processes uh, happened uh, as far back as 2000. And uh, mind you, in 2000, this was the time when discussions about resolution 1825 were beginning to take place. Uh, this was during a conference uh, in Atta, uh, in a city called Atta in Djibouti, uh, where Djibouti was hosting a peace uh, process conference for the warring parties in Somalia. Uh, they brought together the five uh, clans, the major clans in Somalia, uh, and you can see from the get-go that this was an elitist uh, peace process. It was gender exclusionary, it was blind to the realities of women. So out of these uh, five clans, there were about 3,000 delegates. Of these 3,000 delegates, only 100 were women, 100 out of 3,000. So women decided enough is enough. We need to really challenge the exclusion. We need to challenge the patriarchal attitudes that are being uh, uh, perpetuated in this so-called peace process. So what, what they decided to do, they, they were coming from different clans, different political affiliations. They decided, yes, we are members of our different clans, but why don't we form our own clan? So the women of Somalia then established what was called the sixth clan of Somalia. So see how they thought outside the box. Uh, in peace processes, you often see that there are the formal tables, there are the informal tables, and, and then, then there are also negotiations that happen behind the scenes. So they, they decided that if, if we cannot be part of this initiative, which only recognizes leaders from the clans, why don't we call ourselves the sixth clan of Somalia? So the women uh, were coming from the different uh, sides of the conflict. So they jointly agreed to break up with the clan leadership and they began to lobby as a single bloc in support of the women's agenda. As a result of this process, the, the mediators and, and the negotiators officially recognized the women as an additional clan in Somalia. Somalia. And they, they succeeded in ensuring that during the peace processes and during the ensuing discussion, the resultant peace agreement that was uh, signed 
provided for a 10% quota uh, for women at all levels of leadership in decision making in Somalia. So as a result, the transitional government of Somalia was called upon to ensure that at least 10% of every leadership position whether it is at the uh, local, local government level, level in the National Assembly, as well as in cabinet, included women. So, so you can see that, that the women of Somalia broke new ground, they broke barriers. And in, in subsequent peace processes, Somali women have continued to participate as delegates and observers uh, in, uh, during the uh, uh, peace processes which have been facilitated by the Intergovernmental Authority on Development. And, and I'm sure uh, 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 Director Abi, Abi uh, can, can attest, attest to that. that. Um, in, from, from 2002 to 2004, uh, women in Somalia succeeded in having a 12 percent quota for women in the new assembly. And now the, we are standing at a 25 percent quota. So fast forward, this was 22 years ago. This is the historical change that women of Somalia laid. So uh, staying again within the same period in Burundi uh, during the Arusha peace negotiations. Um, this was led by the late uh, President Mwalimu uh, Nyerere of Tanzania, uh, who also uh, had to listen to women who were coming from all sectors uh, of society, from civil society, from political parties. Also, women who were part of the armed groups. There were 19 armed groups that were, that were negotiating during the Burundi peace process. Uh, what women decided to do was also to uh, put aside their political differences, their ideological differences, and they established what was called the All Burundi Women's Peace Conference. And the efforts were supported by organizations like Fem Africa Solidarity, uh, UN Women as well as the regional organizations such as ACCORD, the African Center for the Constructive Resolution of Dispute, and of course, the African Union. So um, from Mali Munyere's mediation process, which was then handed over to uh, 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 late President Nelson Mandela, the trend continued of the need to recognize uh, and to meaningfully include women, not just as observers, but, but also is uh, uh, people that have something to contribute to the peace process. So, so the all, women, uh, all party Burundi Women's Peace Conference then decided, decided that they would hold parallel negotiations on their own out, uh, outside of the formal peace negotiations. And then they would come up with position papers uh, uh, on different thematic areas that were being negotiated. So some of the key demands that they made to the mediators, uh, to the mediation team, as well, as well as to the, the negotiators, uh, the official representatives of the armed groups was that they needed all laws that were discriminatory against women in Burundi to be repealed. They were also calling for special measures to safeguard women's security, including an end to impunity and an end to sexual and gender-based violence. They also looked into the future and to say, in a post-conflict Burundi, what should that future look like? So, so the, the women, women demanded that uh, when, when the peace agreement was signed, it should be included in the provisions of the peace agreement that women should have access to land after the conflict. They, they also needed uh, women and girls to have access to education. So, so subsequently, the, the uh, tenets of the Arusha peace agreement, uh, thankfully, as a result of this intervention by the all party Burundi Women's Peace Conference, included provisions on free and compulsory education for girls, women's access to land, but also a quota system for women in leadership. Another case study uh, is that of Kenya uh, during the 2007-2008 post-conflict violence in Kenya. Again, uh, there were a panel of eminent persons who were then deployed when Kenya was burning as a result of the uh, post-election violence. Uh, the, the panel of eminent persons came from, from the African Union, and, and of course, they were supported by regional economic uh, blocks like Comesa, like, like the East African, African community, community, and IGAD. But, but I think what really was telling uh, in terms of uh, the approach, both by, by the AU and the REC, was that they needed also to walk the talk. So, so what, what the African Union did uh, was to send three eminent personalities. One was uh, uh, former, former President Jakaya Kikwete, uh, and, and then the other one was uh, Kofi Annan, 
the uh, former United Nations Secretary General, and, and the third person was Madame Krasha Machel. So you, so you can, can see that intentionally they included a woman as a mediator. This, this was, was the first time where a mediator, mediator was, was a woman, woman within a form of peace processes. If, if you, you look back in the history of mediation and peace processes in Africa, most, most of the mediators tend to be um, men. But, but for, for Kenya, Kenya uh, the, the African, African Union had to make a statement. And it, it paid off in, in the sense that there was uh, intentional inclusion of gender issues, not, not just at the symbolic level, but, but also at a more meaningful level. So, so what, what the three mediators did was to organize parallel talks. Uh, there were talks within talks, if I can uh, use that statement. Within, within the formal talks, uh, the political parties uh, uh, um, led by uh, Raila Odinga and uh, the, the late president, Mike, Mike Baki. Those were the two political parties that were in big conflict. But, but outside of the formal talks, talks they, they intentionally organized women from civil society, from political parties, uh, uh, women that had been displaced, women from academia, women from business, to ensure that, that women would bring in their voices and perspectives on what should be the subject matter or the agenda for discussion in the Kenyan national dialogue process. It was called the Kenya National Dialogue on uh, Reconciliation. So, those, Those efforts, efforts again paid, paid off in, in the sense, sense that there was a recognition that security issues go beyond these needs that are expressed by uh, political leaders. Of course, it was uh, a key issue was on the disputed election results, the disputed processes. But beyond the disputed uh, election processes, they began to realize that there were other underlying issues during the consultations, issues of access to land, issues of uh, 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 disproportionate use of force by the security actors, issues of uh, ethnicity, ethnic polarization in society, uh, uh, the lack of social cohesion, historical lack of social cohesion, which has been in, uh, over time instrumentalized by, by political actors in Kenya. There were a number of issues on uh, whether the model of a centralized government was working for Kenya. If they had not created those spaces where, outside of the formal uh, mediation process, other actors like civil society, like, like the business sector, sector like, the, like the religious leaders would, would have time, time to engage with women, women those, those issues might, might not have come up during, during the formal mediation, mediation process. process. So, so the, the women uh, uh, created a diverse cross-section of uh, um, um, coalition, coalition known as the Women's, women's Consultation, Consultation Group, which was, which was established, established to engage, engage and, advise and advise with the mediation, mediation team. The Women's, the women's Consultation, Consultation Group of Kenya, Kenya they, they urged mediators and the conflict parties to, to urgently resolve the humanitarian, the humanitarian crisis, crisis to, combat to combat gender based, based violence, violence, and also, and to, also address to address root causes, causes of conflict, of conflict such, as such as unequal and or inequitable uh, land, land distribution, distribution processes. processes. They, they also urged the mediator to ensure that, that the conflict, conflict parties go beyond, beyond power, power politics, politics to, look at, to look at how to how create, to create a, model a model of governance that would, that would work in Kenya. And that and model, that model of, government of government included an emphasis on a decentralized uh, system of governance. To this, to this end, end, what we, what see, we now see now in Kenya is a devolved, devolved governance, governance system, system where, where the counties, the counties make decisions, they control, they control their, resources, their resources, and thankfully, thankfully this was also a result of women's participation in their, in their emphasis, emphasis that let's look let's beyond, look beyond power, politics power politics and see, and what, see what other issues, issues are driving, driving this conflict. Uh, still uh, within, within the region, let's look, let's at, the look at the case study of South Sudan. The inclusion of women in peace and security processes in South Sudan has it actually, actually helped, helped to humanize, humanize uh, uh, the, conflict. the conflict. Apart from, Apart the, from numbers the numbers and the figures that we hear of the impact, of the impact the, on the conflict, women in, women South, in South Sudan, Sudan helped, helped uh, mediators, uh, mediators, negotiators, the international communities, the, the regional, regional communities, communities to realize, realize that, that the conflict, conflict was hurting, was hurting uh, the, uh, the country's women, women and girls. Uh, the women, uh, of, the South women of South Sudan, just like just like the women of Somalia, just like just like the women of Burundi, just like just like the women of Kenya, Kenya, they decided, they decided to let go of their political differences. 
they also they formed also what formed was what was called the South Sudan, Sudan Women's, Women's Coalition. Coalition. The South, the South Sudan, Sudan Women's Coalition was made up of broad-based broad uh, stakeholders, stakeholders from civil, from civil society, society, from the from media, media uh, from, uh, from uh, political, political parties. parties. Uh, and, uh, and young women, young women as well as, as, well as uh, their, uh, their more experienced, experienced counterparts. Counterpart. I have I had, uh, had uh, the, the, the honor, honor um, um, to, also to also engage with some of the women in South Sudan, Sudan who were, who were telling, telling me of their, their stories uh, of, innovation of innovation and creativity on how, on how they had to let go of, of their differences. differences. Sometimes, Sometimes they, they, have to, they had to do mediation within a mediation. They had to uh, have several sessions uh, of mediation processes among themselves so that they could speak with one voice. And um, uh, organizations such as Accord uh, and other uh, civil society organizations such as uh, CMI mm -hmm. actually helped women to come up with a unified agenda for the mediation process. So, so women, women then were be, uh, given the platform to participate in different forms of uh, the mediation process. Some participated in work, working groups, thematic working groups, uh, in high-level expert workshops, they, they presented, presented also position papers to the parties and to the mediation team. They, they pushed for gender sensitive considerations in the uh, peace process. For example, uh, in South Sudan, uh, the agreement for the resolution of conflict uh, in South Sudan, uh, in, as well as the subsequent revised agreement for the resolution of conflict in South Sudan, signed in 2015 and 2017, respectively. Both agreements had gender sensitive provision. And, and thankfully, it was not just gender sensitive provisions, but it was also gender and youth sensitive provisions. The women were quite intentional about ensuring that they also uh, worked together and closely with the uh, 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 yeah, young people in South Sudan. So, so I, I think what we are learning uh, from these examples is that inclusion of uh, women uh, in their meaningful engagement in peace processes pays off. As a result uh, of uh, women's inclusion in South Sudan, um, they also uh, pushed for accountability of conflict-related sexual violence and an end to sexual and gender-based violence. Uh, one of the key results of women's participation in the South Sudan peace process was the push for a hybrid court. Uh, which is expected to become one of the key instruments of promoting accountability and transitional justice in South Sudan. Um, Frederick maybe might uh, speak later to this. This is still working in progress, but the fact that conflict parties put their signature to the agreement which said that they will establish a hybrid court to try cases of uh, crimes against humanity, uh, cases of sexual crimes, as well as uh, gender-based violence, is, is a testimony of what, what can happen if you put uh, women uh, um, uh, to the table and, and you engage them meaningfully. Uh, I will uh, quickly uh, talk about uh, what has also been uh, some of the uh, institutional policy legal environment that has allowed women to have spaces to express their voices in, in such platforms. And, and of course, course, I will not uh, forget about, about the uh, adoption of Resolution 1825, which is what I about. At, at the level, level of the African Union, we, we can also see that the continental body is, quite, is doing a lot uh, from its agenda 2063. I think uh, she will talk, talk about, about aspiration four. I can, I can talk, talk about aspiration six of agenda 2063, which, which talks, talks about a more inclusive uh, um, uh, peace in order, order to create, create the Africa that, that we want. But, but also there are other, other instruments like uh, the Maputo, Maputo Protocol, which, is, uh, um, uh, which was adopted in 2003, as well as the Solemn Declaration of Gender Equality in Africa. And of course, the, the initiatives that are being run by people like Fereke, uh, uh, the uh, Continental Network of African Women in Conflict Prevention uh, and Mediation. These are attempts to uh, institutionalize the participation of women in mediation processes and to stop making it an ad hoc initiative to make sure that this is part of the written down guidelines that any mediation process should actually meaningfully engage women uh, and they should be at the place is, uh, 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 of uh, these negotiations as fully fledged mediators, negotiators, observers or witnesses. Some, Some of the, the challenges, challenges maybe that I can talk about uh, that remain is that um, there, there is still peripheralization of gender issues in security processes. 
often you hear people giving excuses like let, let us, us deal with the import, most important issues first. We, we get, get this agreement signed, and, and then gender will come later. So it's, it's like people are arguing that the rights of women and girls are an afterthought. If, if they are considered are now, they will derail the peace process. However, the very idea that you can craft a gender-blind peace agreement is fraught with challenges. It's important to ensure that gender is integrated and mainstream at the very beginning. So what do we need to, be, to do to address this issue of peripheralization of gender is to ensure that um, negative stereotypes about gender are addressed through education awareness raising. I'm also calling upon the AU and the regional economic communities to come up with uh, mediation guidelines that make it imperative and even uh, um, uh, compulsory for mediation processes to have quota systems uh, in terms of uh, how many women can uh, participate, representing conflict parties, representing observers and witnesses. There is also still a limited participation of women in peace processes. Actually, a study by UN Women in 2020 uh, revealed that only 13% of women are negotiators and only 6% are mediators. That is worldwide. Uh, and about 70% of the peace processes that have been signed so far since 2000, um, only 30% um, uh, of them included uh, specific mention on gender specific provisions. Uh, when we look at the African Union currently, maybe, Frederick, uh, uh, you correct me, out of the 31 special envoys that exist today, only six are women. So we have Madam Benita Diop, Madam Michelle Diai, uh, Honorable Ellen Johnson Zelif, Dr. Ngozi, uh, the Special Envoy to Mobilize Support for COVID, and Ms. Chilo. Six out of 31. That's, That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think um, in line with the FMY's objectives, they should also be rosters of women mediators, which, which should be developed at national level. So, so FEMWAS chapters at national level, at regional level. I'm glad that that process is already taking place. I know Zimbabwe is a chapter, so I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, women remain underrepresented in the security. This, this is the supply side. side. Most of the security actors are deployed in conflict situations. But, but when you go at country, country level, women are underrepresented. So, so it becomes a challenge for peacekeeping mission because they are dealing with countries that are deploying all men to peacekeeping missions. So what do we need to do? We need to revitalize our recruitment strategies. We need to look at our promotion and retention policies within the security sector so that we can uh, encourage women to apply and also to be considered. Um, Lele, there's a general uh, from uh, Keno from South Africa. South, uh, South Africa National Defense Force can assure us that it is possible. When, when the Southern African National, uh, South Africa National Defense Force started uh, at the end of apartheid, they, they, they had 6% of women in the military. Now, now they are standing at 31%. So, so it's possible, possible to have women in the security forces. It's also uh, possible uh, that once women are within the security forces, we can then mainstream gender in the security forces. We need ongoing security sector reform. We need uh, ongoing capacity building programs, but also we need to address gender disparities within the security sectors. We also need to promote gender, uh, um, gendered monitoring and assessments of peace and security initiatives. Thankfully, we have the AU Continental Results Framework on women in peace and security. That too can be popularized at regional level, at national level, to allow for reporting that is gendered. And of course, we need to deal with impunity. We need to deal with restrictive gender norms because at the end of the day, gender inequality at the root of uh, this scourge of gender inequality is this culture of exclusion and patriarchy. It needs to be challenged through education, through outreach, and also through confronting inimical social norms. So, so I'll conclude by just saying that it is evident that genuine security, genuine and inclusive peace processes, they require not just the absence of war, but, but also the elimination of unjust social relations. It includes 
uh, uh, dealing with an unjust and equal gender relations. A gender equal world, a more inclusive world is likely to be a more peaceful world. Thank you. Thank you, Martha, uh, to have brought together all of these uh, uh, rich elements. Ça, uh, we are going to. Uh, we are going to catch up on a little bit of lost time. Thank you, Martha, for having brought together vous avez partagé l'expérience so well de, 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 de toutes ces femmes qui se sont battues. Et ça fait beaucoup plaisir d'entendre ces femmes qui se sont battues pour imposer. Et ça, en quoi ça montre que ce sont les luttes paix. Les femmes de la Somalie qui ont créé un sixième clan pour pouvoir imposer un agenda. Ça, ça fait beaucoup plaisir. Au Burundi, les femmes qui ont réussi à, à dépasser leur clivage politique pour penser que paix et sécurité. Ainsi qu'au Kenya, où nous avons envie, a parlé donc de, de, de deux consultatifs des femmes qui ont vraiment et impacté sur la révolution, uh, la, la révolution du conflit post-électoral et au Soudan du Sud, où vraiment la coalition des femmes du Sud, du, du Soudan du Sud a, a mené un agenda qui a vraiment fait la promotion donc, et, du genre. Alors c'est vrai qu'il y a toujours beaucoup de défis, beaucoup de défis. So, la participation limitée des femmes dans le processus de paix, il y a encore beaucoup à faire. Il y a encore de quelques normes restrictives du genre et surtout le faible taux de participation des femmes dans les opérations de maintien de paix. Je pense que les militaires pourront nous expliquer et pourquoi ils ne veulent pas que les femmes participent aux opérations de soutien de la, de la, de la paix. Peut-être que de toute façon, vous aurez le temps donc, de nous expliquer pourquoi. Et enfin, donc, il faut qu'on continue donc, de promouvoir la question de genre. Parce que ce n'est qu'un combat, un combat qui continue et qui ne peut plus commencer. Donc, sur ce, je vais donc éviter le... la deuxième panéliste, Mme Traoré, qui va revenir très succinctement sur pourquoi les acteurs de la du secteur de la sécurité en Afrique devrait être s'intéresser à l'intégration de la dimension de genre. Ça revient encore aux questions donc, que, 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 que Martha vient donc d'expliquer. Existe-t-il des exemples spécifiques de processus de paix et de sécurité africains qui montrent ce point Et aussi, quelle est la place des hommes et des garçons, si vous voulez, et si les hommes et les filles dans les secteurs spécifiques des menaces, des, menaces, des, menaces des défis et des réponses en matière donc, de sécurité Alors, donc, je crois que le Thank you, Marissa. Peace and security. Et il faut qu'on puisse. Martha, thank, thank you for this really brilliant, brilliant one. And then the, the examples that show that really things are happening at uh, many, many levels level, and women are being so resilient despite the, all the challenges and so on. And so my presentation will a bit shock you uh, because when we come and talk about gender, everybody is not at the same level. And, and most, most of the, the time where there is resistance because uh, sometimes we just go above people's head and they, they cannot relate to the issue. So for that reason, I just uh, feel, feel like, you know, when, when we come in a space, space like, like that, we should act like children. We, we open up, we have fun, we look at images, and then we try to interpret them. So I will move my presentation now. I uh, hope it's working. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is, is it working? working? I am supposed, supposed to move. move. I, I thought, thought it was this, this one. one. Yeah. yeah. Should be this, this one. one. Oh, okay. This, this is not starting, starting well. well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't okay. you so recognize uh, Um. So I am going to yeah. start. And Monsieur dans notre groupe qui est très difficile, qui a beaucoup la rotation. Donc je vais demander à Fal de lire le premier, le premier quote là. Fal, please read the first quote. Fal, please read the first quote. You must participate. Fal. Il est souhaitable que le technicien enlève le. It would be helpful if the technician <laughs> removed okay, the read this huh? Yeah, read the first quote. I, I want to make sure people are participating. <laughs> the seeds of success in every, every nation on earth are best planted in women and children by former presidents of Malawi. Yeah. Do we, yes. have, do we agree with that? that? The seed of success in every nation on earth 
are best, best planted in women. And, and I will do the second, second one, one, which is from uh, Matei Wangari. And uh, she's, she's a Nobel, Nobel Prize, Prize winner, winner for the environment. environment. What, what is going on? This, this is... Oh, God. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. And so... Uh, and uh, she said, it is the little things citizens do. That's what, what makes the difference. And, and this relates to you as a leader. leader. Do you understand? So when we sit here is to see what difference can you make at your level to change things. And we all have the capacity at our level to make that change. And so I brought quotes from uh, different, uh, yeah, I have to move on. Well, you are going to miss all the beautiful slides. So, and then we had the former UN uh, secretary, uh, executive uh, director, who said that women are half of every community. And are they therefore not half of every solution? How can we, in good conscience, bring world law to the peace table and not women? So that's what we need to remember. Women are half of the population in every country. And even slightly more than, than half, if, if we look at the ECOWAS region, we say that uh, it's ECOWAS of the people. And, and if, if you look at who are the majority of the people, they are women, and, and when children, uh, young, uh, the, the youth is added is 75%. So when we talk about security issue, whose security are we talking about? Is the majority of the population. And these are the majority also who are impacted negatively by conflict. Therefore, Therefore if, if they are addressing conflict, conflict their, their voice and need to be amplified, and, and their perspective need to be shared, and their knowledge need to be part of the process and integrated. So if we try to unpack the concept of security, I cannot show you the start. If we try to impact, uh, unpack the concept of security, we have seen through the week since we started on Monday, that, that security, security is something holistic. It's just, just not you guys with the uniform, uniform. But, but it's also, uh, we, we have addressed the question of rule of law. We have talked about the issue of, uh, I don't know, youth. We have talked about the issue of uh, uh, governance, and maritime security, and so on. So then looking at the security issue holistically is important for you to address not, not saying, oh, no, no women are not competent, competent or youth doesn't have the competence, because security is holistic, and, and therefore everybody can bring something uh, on the, uh, in the stage. So now, when, when you're talking about gender, gender issue, it's really scary, because, because it's like, like dealing, dealing with a load on your head, you sitting at your level, and they say, oh, make sure that uh, at your level as a leader, you change gender issue or make sure that women are integrated is a very scary thing. And it's like you trying to face alone a rock that is coming on you, right? But yet, let's look at how many women are in our security forces at the decision-making level. Most of the time, when we have women, they are not representing a leadership position. I remember when we even went to Morocco during one of the ACSS, I think the alumni thing from NDU, and, and we have seen, and they, they say, oh, we have some women at the Air Force. But most of the women there, actually, the one I have asked, they were doing administrative work. So when you look at, you ask yourself, how many are in the leadership in the military, in the intelligence, in the police, in border control, and different phases of security. So, so now, this was a picture from, uh, you know, world leaders in 2000. And yet, you try to detect how many women are there, right? It's very, very difficult to see, yeah. So this is at, at the global level. level. Do you think, do you think, think this picture changed a lot? Despite all the 
uh, policies and all the legal framework. Do you think that this uh, image, uh, image can change, change a lot? And, and now, now let's, let's look, look at at the uh, regional, regional level. level. Let's, let's look, look at at regional, regional level. level. Let's go at community level. level. This, this is, is in Sudan. Sudan. But, but the, the reality is, is the conflict, the battles are done, done on the, the body, body of, of women. women. And, and yet, yet we, we have tokenism and we will say, oh, this woman yeah, had, had a Nobel, Nobel Prize. Prize. This, this woman, woman have, have this, uh, uh, yeah, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Is, uh, is, uh, at the, the head, head of, of I don't know, know, some international, international organization. organization. But, but these, these are, are not the women, women who are left behind. The women, the women who are left, are left behind, behind, we can complain, complain that, that we are left, left behind. But the but real the women, women who are left, left behind, behind. these are, are the rural women, women who, who are, are bringing their, their back, back day and night. And, and my, my brother, brother up front here, here if you see me in my presentation, say, say, call him. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not sleeping here. here. <laughs> And, and Joel, Joel is grabbing his head. head. Joel, Joel, you, you get, get off the shot here. Yeah. <laughs> and so, these, these are, are the women we are talking about who, who are really at the, you know, know very not educated, educated have children, do not have the resources that needed to take care of their family, to take care of the community, and so on. So, so when we are talking about security issue, these are, are the women also who are exposed, even when conflict starts. When, when it's starting at the rural area, area for instance, you take the case of Mali, you, you go, go to those communities, these are the women who get attacked and rape. And I'm working now on the uh, LCB uh, lecture basin, and then you can see, these are the people who get attacked literally every week, every night. These are the people who are left behind. So we have work to do in Africa. And again, no matter how educated you are, whether you are women from the West or from the global South, these are also what is waiting for you. You can be educated, you have to work, but these are the social, uh, as they say in French, that you are working in your formal work, and then these are the other work that wait for you at home. That prevent a lot of women to really commit to leadership position, to really commit to, uh, you know, uh, position, position that can, yeah, yeah uh, thing. So, again, when, when we, we look at Africa, Africa we, people look at us, and then it's really important to, understand, to know our history. When, when you talk about gender issue, usually people will accuse you of being westernized and bringing new concepts and so on. Africa, I, in my knowledge, is a society which, which has matrimonial society, you know, thing. until today, if you look at the Ashanti culture, you can see what is the role of the uh, queen mother in the Ashanti culture. Decisions are not taken without her. And this is not something that we are inventing. Whether you look at in Egypt, you go to, I don't know, uh, uh, to Madagascar, you go to Daome, you go to Zimbabwe, you, you can, can see that, that women, women have fought war. They, they have fought war, Mozambique, you name it. Whether it's like, like the, from the Elusophone culture to the Francophone culture to the Arabophone culture, you know, the women have fought. Across Africa, these women are there and they have fought. So why is it that today we still think that like women don't fit in the security apparatus? Because we have this woman, we have demonstrated how it's done. And, and we, we need, need to remember, remember that. that. Then, then why should we care about gender mainstreaming? Why should we care about, about women and integration? It's important. Why? Quantitatively, as I told you about the number, but also qualitatively. Qualitatively, representation is important. And men cannot articulate the experience of women. One case in point. My, my former boss from one when, when they, they were in uh, Emmanuel Bombardier, they went to Sierra Leone, and they were trying to have the Women program at the time to create it. And so they were the head of a uh, you know, community mobilization, and they were asking this woman to talk. When she started talking about her experience, she just burst in uh, crying and ran out of the room. 
and she she could not talk. They followed her. She said, "I cannot talk to you because she was gang raped." And she said, "Trying to talk to you guys just make me live the experience again and again." So there is a need for other women to be there to be able to talk with those women. The issue of participation is highly important. And especially in the climate now where we are, and we know that our institutions are talking about equity and justice and uh, inclusion is so important for us to know that qualitatively women need to participate. If we want to sustain peace, we want peace processes to be fair, transparent, we have to make sure that women are represented and they are participating. And uh, the issue of accountability and transparency. And again, women need to be there. It's a human rights issue. And it's the moral imperative on all of us to make sure that half of our population are participating, their perspective and their experience are being shared. And also, and I had that beautiful discussion with Martha when you were saying that security and insecurity are experienced differently. So this is important. And so the, the other question that Dr. Emily asked me you know, to answer is like gender-sensitive threat challenges and responses. This has to do with the gender analysis. And what we need to remember, women are not a monolith uh, you know, group. And we are not homogeneous. As you can see, me as a, maybe a single woman, is different, different from somebody, somebody here. We have the same similar education. We have children, and then it's different from somebody who have a physical, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, some illnesses and so on. And it's different from somebody who have no education or is divorced. So when you're doing the analysis, you need to do the proper analysis to disaggregate the data so that you can address the need of different people. Five minutes already. And then, <laughs> then when you are doing the uh, analysis again, you need to take in account even the need of the little boy who are in war and, uh, and the little girls also who are being captured as a sexual, uh, I don't know, uh, being abused sexually and so on. As you can see the, uh, the, the thing, this is a real picture from Liberia during the war. Men can go and run during the war, but the women will never leave the children behind, never. So, you know, when men have their load on the head, and it's not a comparison between men and women, really, it's just the differential way of us dealing with things. And that is important to understand. I'm looking at the child for you. The analysis is good to know the need of, you know, young girls who are captured and young boys who are captured. So on going by barrier, barrier, I think that we all wear a lens of perception. And, and this perception defines the way we look at gender. And it can be cultural norms, it can be religious norms, it can be the level of education and things. We have to be aware of that. And why gender issue persists? Because people like you and I, even women sitting in a position of power, we choose not to see, not to hear, and not to understand what is happening. So it is your responsibility as a leader. If you want to change the game in Africa, you have to make that difference at your level. And again, when changes come, we say we all want changes. Because as we can see, no matter what all the things you have explained, at the international level, the gender issues are accepted. We understand now. That, that this participation, participation is important. But, but when, when we say who we want to change, none of us want to change. I was in the bus today when I heard all the crazy gender, gender jokes, I was, I was about, about to, to jump out, out of the window. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then you as leaders, these are some leadership principles for me to share with you. You, you need to wear lenses that have, you know, look at, you know, both men and women, how to address the need, young boys and young girls. You courage, you cannot do anything without courage. 
and, and there's still one person who is the majority. majority. You look at Mandela, you look at uh, Winnie Mandela, you look at, I don't know, all those leaders here, Thomas Sagara, you name it, Ekwana Kuma, these are people who have courage. You have to display that at your level. Yes, well, well I, don't I don't know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you, you need to empower other people. You, you lose nothing, nothing in your, your light if you light up other people. And, and you need to, uh, to uh, well, well, I, I, I jump it. it. So anyway, uh, and, and the vision, you, you cannot, cannot size anything that, that you cannot, cannot envision. If, if you, you cannot, cannot see it in your head, you will not be able to realize it. it. So, so for you to see a world that, that is balanced, that is fair, and have equity, you have, have to imagine that in your head for it to happen. happen. And, and to get, get ahead, and, and that's, that's the gap, gap we have in Africa. We put, put our need before our population, population a before everybody. everybody. So, so for you, you, you have, have to be a transformation leader that serves your people, and that's to put the need of your people before you. And again, and again, as, as a leader, leader, you have to be, you know, to, to keep, keep leading, you have to keep learning. And this, this is also a problem in Africa, Africa because we think we are too big to sit in the workshop to be trained. We are too big to learn. So if you don't learn, you will not be able to do that change. And so, oh, there is a need for coordination and uh, uh, how is it? Communication. And, and then integration, integration. I, I jumped, jumped the, 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 the side. And, and again, again, equality is already in the policies and in our laws. Every constitution in Africa tell you about non-discrimination and equality, but, but the reality are we having uh, uh, equity? And that's in your hand as a leader in your different level. Equity is the opportunity you do to really uh, bring somebody up there. And, and then, then I, I love this one. one. And you say everybody is equal, and we are all of the good stuff. The reality is men and women are different. It's like apple and banana. One, you know, know they both have fiber, they're doing different, different vitamins. Vitamin. Does that mean apple is better than banana or vice versa? No. Everybody has something to bring. We need to understand that as leader. If you ask a fish to climb a tree, you will never know how good swimmer is the fish. If you ask a monkey to swim, you will miss that a monkey is a good climber. So as a leader also, you need to see the potential on those people who work under you and how you're going to elevate them. And these are women. Do you understand? You cannot say, oh, women are not qualified. They don't have enough thing. When well, Liberia is the worst stop, and, and then, then they were trying, trying to reform the military and so on. They, they have to bring many women on board, board and then train them, train them to uh, upskill. Similar, Similar thing happened in Sierra Leone. So, so then, then people might not be qualified sometimes, sometime, but you need to open the door to provide training and, and to level, level up so then they, they can catch up. I'm, I'm getting at the end, Emil. So, so this is the real uh, picture from, from Liberia again. People who, these are the group of women they are not elitist women on high heel who sat outside for weeks, yeah, under the rain and slept there to stop the war. These are the women who pushed for the negotiation to go to Akosovo in Ghana and stop the war in Liberia. Charles Law said, by passing, if I come back and find them here, I will clean them up. They still stay there until you know, they manage to bring people. So, so when, when we're talking about, about these women and, and peace and security, it's not about competition between men and women. That's a misunderstanding. It's for us to work together, how we can come together and benefit from our society and build our society. And, and from Mandela says, sometimes it falls upon on the generation to be great. You, you can be that great generation, all of you. And, and you let your greatness, greatness blossom. blossom. So, so it has to be about personal. You have to transform yourself before you can transform our institution. You have to, you know, change the relationship. You have to work on cultural issues. You cannot say, I'm born in this culture and this is that. But in the end, it's about also structural changes. How do you transform those structures? So know your own resistance. 
know your, your own resistance. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. People, People are enjoying it. it. Yes. yes. So, so these are the steps. <laughs> and, and this, this is, is the African, African picture that shows strong, strong. Nothing, nothing can destroy this, this one, right? right? Most, Most of, of us know this one. This, this is, is the kind, kind of execution we need in Africa. Africa. Really. And, and, and then, then it's about, about your own perception. perception. How, How do you change your own perception? Then when, when you, you want to change it and make other people understand, understand you need to communicate to them to be able, able to change that, that perception. So apply, apply the five keys about participation, protection of women's rights, right. the, the policy we have changed, changed that one, you know, at, at the, the personal, personal level, level and build really partnership, especially, especially in Africa, to make, make this happen. happen. Again, coordinate, which, which is a problem, problem. cooperate, communicate, build consensus, and, and make sure that the gender is integrated. And in the end, Margaret really says that, that I never doubt, doubt that, that a small group of thoughtful committee, committed citizens can change, change the world. And in fact, this, this is, is the only thing that, that has, has ever happened. happened. So, so the, the bottom, bottom line is, we are, are not teaching you anything new, but, but the fact that, that you come and meet each other here, here this, this is something, something that we can do. Network, put the puzzles together, and, together and, and let's make Africa, Africa move. Thank, Thank you so much. much. So that is what gender is about. So I will simply accept the, uh, qui a voulu donc, uh, the will uh, uh, of those who have spoken. Uh,